With 400 million active users, Spotify has transformed the way we listen to music forever. Merely opening the app gives you access to more than 70 million tracks with the click of a button. If you never stopped listening, it would take you more than three lifetimes to go through the entire Spotify catalog in one go. Despite this incredible amount of freely available music, users often prefer repeatedly listening to a small selection of their favorites. Some people get stuck in a specific genre or a handful of artists, never to venture into the musical unknown. For these users, as well as for the musically adventurous among us, Spotify delivers a compelling solution called Discover Weekly. Every Monday, Discover Weekly gives 400 million Spotify users with a playlist of 30 songs they've never heard before. If you're at least as old as I am, you may remember that music-passionate friend who burned you personalized CDs, encouraging you to take it. You love the perfect palette of Flemish counterpoint music. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, Discovery Weekly has come to be that friend just in silico. What's great about this service is that, like your childhood friend, it knows your musical tastes so well that it can make fairly accurate guesses about what you may like. But how does this seemingly psychic magic happen? Answer the world of recommendation systems. A recommendation system is an algorithm which tries to predict the rating or preference a user would give to an item, like a song or a movie. Leveraging this information, the system suggests a number of further items the user may enjoy. Recommendation systems are used across many types of media. The last time you watched Netflix or bought a book on Amazon, you may recall being gently offered to watch other movies or buy other books. The basic technology that powers recommendation systems is largely the same regardless of the specific domain of application like movies, books or films. We don't know the technical details of how Discover Weekly works, but in 2015, Chris Johnson, engineering manager at Spotify at the time, gave a talk where he outlined how the algorithm works from a high level. Spotify's Discover Weekly recommendation model isn't a revolutionary. Instead, it's a combination of a number of effective recommendation techniques previously used by other industry players. This has led to a uniquely powerful music recommendation engine, mainly based on three recommendation models. One, collaborative filtering, which consists of collecting and analyzing users' behaviors. Two, content-based filtering, which looks at the descriptions of songs and artists. And three, audio-based filtering, where features are extracted from raw audio through machine learning. Let's delve into these three approaches in more detail. Collaborative filtering is what Spotify has traditionally relied upon. With collaborative filtering, recommendations are outsourced to the users. Listening behaviors are analyzed and used as a way to predict users' preferences. The underlying idea is that people who listen to similar music likely have a similar musical taste. Conversely, if a group of like-minded people listens to two different songs, these songs are probably similar. This information can be leveraged to suggest songs you've never heard before, but how does Spotify implement this intuition in their algorithms? The answer is the user song metrics. Each row of these metrics represents a user, each column a song. In reality, this is a gigantic metric stored in the Spotify servers, containing 400 million rows and 70 million columns. If you're a Spotify user, you're one in 400 million. After applying some linear algebra magic to this matrix, Spotify generates two types of vectors. The user vector represents one single user's taste. The song vector represents one single song's profile. That means there are, you guessed it, 400 million user vectors and 70 million song vectors. So, for the anonymous user John Doe to receive new music recommendations, the algorithm identifies users with a musical taste similar to John's. 
Uh, that means uh, his user vector is compared against 400 million other user vectors, creating a group of like-minded people with similar musical taste. That means recommending a song to John is as simple as choosing a track that one of the people in the group has heard, but John hasn't. Although collaborative filtering is very effective, it has some drawbacks. This approach doesn't use any type of information about the recommended items or songs, but is purely based on the consumption patterns associated with these items. This implies that more popular items are easier to recommend. Conversely, unpopular items are difficult to suggest and new items that haven't yet been consumed are impossible to suggest. If Spotify wants to recommend a new amazing undiscovered artist work, they're better off integrating a variety of approaches in their recommendation engine. One such approach is content-based filtering, which compares descriptors of an item against a user profile to make recommendations. The user profile is built from the same tags that describe the content the user consumes, like rock or classical. In 2014, Spotify acquired Econest, a company that employed natural language processing, or NLP, to extract semantic information from music-related text content. Spotify constantly crawls the internet to figure out what people think about artists and songs. News articles, blogs, and online reviews are analyzed to infer the adjectives and nouns frequently used to describe the music. These NLP algorithms also spot connections between different songs by looking at the language related to different artists. Although the details of how Spotify processes this data aren't public, we can assume that the music tech giant's approach is similar to that of the acquired Econest. Songs and artists are associated with a number of top terms that describe them semantically. Each term has a weight that quantifies its relative importance for a given item. Similar to collaborative filtering, these top terms are used to find commonalities between different artists and songs. This information is then used to recommend new songs. Despite its effectiveness, the content-based filtering approach faces a major issue. All the information derives from what people write about the music and the artists. In other words, the NLP algorithms don't get any information from the songs themselves. This fails to account for how important the actual sound of a track is in determining whether you like a song or don't like it, for that matter. Uh, it's better to leverage that information through competent audio analysis in order to achieve more well-rounded recommendations. This is where audio-based filtering enters the game. Spotify uses convolutional neural networks to extract musical features directly from raw audio. Interestingly, convolutional networks have mainly been used with visual data. As a result, data scientists have successfully applied them to image detection. This is achieved by feeding a dataset of images to the network to train the model. Once trained, the algorithm is ca capable of classifying different objects that appear in images that are new to the network. In the case of Spotify, the network has been modified to accept audio data as the input instead of just pixels. The architecture of Spotify's network comprises four convolutional layers and three fully connected layers. The input consists of spectrograms of audio frames. The audio frames go through the four convolutional layers, undertaking several max pooling operations, which downsample the time frequency representation or the spectrogram. After a global temporal pooling layer, the data eventually flows through the three dense layers. The output of the neural network consists of an understanding of the song, which includes audio features such as the key of the song, the mode, tempo, loudness, and time signature. The extracted audio features provide a song's sonic profile. Sonic profiles are compared against each other to find similarities among the songs in Spotify's database. Ultimately, this information is used to recommend new songs to users that are sonically similar to what they like. 
As we can see in this image, to produce recommendations, Spotify combines collaborative filtering, text-based filtering, and audio-based filtering, probably using some heuristic like majority voting. This hybrid system allows Spotify to improve the quality of the songs you find in your Discovered Weekly every Monday. Indeed, the combination of methods solve the pitfalls of the individual techniques. Since 2015, Spotify has published a ton of research on music recommendation. They now focus on more advanced use cases, taking into account the listening context of a user to suggest songs that are relevant in the moment. For example, Cozy RNN is a neural net network presented by Spotify that does just that. It's likely that Spotify has integrated some of these advanced techniques in Discover Weekly. However, my guess is that they still rely on more traditional techniques we discussed in this video to generate recommendations. Now you have an overview of how Discover Weekly works. If I know the Sound of AI audience just a little bit, I guess you'd like to see how to actually build a system like this. If this video gets 1000 likes, I'll create a video where I'll show you the implementation of a hybrid recommendation system similar to Discover Weekly. If you'd like to see that, please leave a like and share the video so we can get to 1000 likes. That's all for today. Cheers for now.